Yeah, I know. I know this is like the fifth take of this video. I've got greasy hair. Yeah, I know why nobody watches these beer reviews. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of The Clueless Drinker. Episodes now, really? Uh, yeah, this isn't the first take. Surprise, surprise. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. Sometimes I'm on the ball, and then most of the times I'm just like a rambling mess. It's a good job this isn't like a specialty beer or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, today's beer is from the Paulana Brewery, and this is the Münchia Uti which is pretty much like Munchia original, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know if this is based on like one of the first Paulana recipes, but I do know that this beer was brewed uh, mainly for export. Not sure if that's like in terms of you know, global or just to different regions in Germany, because there's so many breweries around Germany in all the different regions. So it's no surprise that, you know, Beers that you could find in Bavaria might not actually be that common in other areas in Germany. But of course you get your big boys and you get your macro, you know, AB and Bev owned breweries, which is still good for the most part. I don't think I've really had too many bad German lagers from the big breweries because, you know, they've got the Reinheitsgebot, which um, is celebrating its 500th year this year I think and um, even though a lot of the smaller breweries are doing their own little like anti Reinheitsgebot purity law parties and brewing beers that are outside of the purity laws that sort of thing because um, yeah it's a it's a really debated subject um, I can see the good side of it because it means you know high quality it becomes a craft to brew beer but at the same time it does hinder you know creativity it does hinder people, brewers who are unique and uh, thankfully there's an up-and-coming you know craft movement which you know is somewhat established but it's still fairly young but you know I enjoy good beer I don't care what the brewery is I don't care on what scale I don't care what country it comes from if it tastes nice and I enjoy it I'm gonna buy it again and uh, thankfully, a lot of the German, you know, macro breweries produce a lot of high quality stuff. I mean, I think there's about four breweries in the city alone. And Regensburg isn't that big of a city. And uh, the breweries they have, especially Spital and Bischofsdorf, fantastic breweries. And Spital themselves, especially uh, Anton Miller, uh, the head brewer there, he is doing his own line of like chocolate stouts he's done his own barrel aged chocolate stouts those beers that i've covered before on the channel in his manufacturer line it's an exciting place for a beer lover to be in germany and a lot of these beers you know you're paying less than a euro for them and that's fantastic considering that a, bit, a bottle like this could easily cost you anything between two to four pounds back in england and i think pretty much the same you know, difference in America and other territories uh, which is great you know that's still it's great that these beers are making it back to the UK but I never really buy German beers when I'm back at home because I know I don't need to because I can buy them here most of the time for a hell of a lot cheaper uh, but I do like to talk about the beers that may be accessible to uh, British YouTube, uh, British beer lovers and American beer lovers and that sort of thing. And that's what Clueless Drinks all about. It's me just talking to people who probably like myself, uh, relatively new to this thing, or might be looking into getting away from the Carlings, the Budweiser's, the Carlsbergs, that sort of things, the Becks, you know, got to get a bad German brewery in there, even though fair play to them doing the own little crafty line with the pale ale, amber ale and the original pilsners that they've started to do. Uh, a little bit, I don't know, they, those beers could be a hell of a lot more, but anyway, yeah, I'm in Germany, I've got great beers like this to try, and uh, yeah, this is a damn good beer so far. As you can see, I've uh, been polishing this one off. It's a really drinkable beer, uh, really crisp, really refreshing. I know those are words that some people absolutely hate to hear, but I really like a good lager. You know, I don't always have to go for a really hoppy, 
pale ale or IPA. I don't always have to go for a really rich and indulgent smoky, coffee, chocolatey sort of stout. I don't have to always go for a like bizarre concoction of other styles. When I'm surrounded by good lager, you know, why not indulge in it? Well, of course, you've got to drink responsibly. But um, yeah, I like a good lager. Uh, it's so versatile. They work well when you're having a meal. They work well when you're out. You know, they work well when you're with others. They work well when you're at gatherings. They work well when you're having a barbecue or whether you're socialising or you just want a couple of beers to relax to back at home. They're just a, a really great style. I mean, yeah, some consider them such a boring beer style and that sort of thing. But, you know, there are people who are doing exciting things with the lager style. They're really hopping them up, which sort of takes away the whole, oh, this is a lager aspect. But some of them do it where it's hopped up, but not completely changing the style. And yeah, I just love a good lager. And this is one of those good lagers. So on the nose, it's what you expect. It's almost slightly sweetened caramel malts. It's got a little bit of savoury dankness, there's a hint of pepper, a hint of herbs there. A little bit of honey in the background, a little bit of sweetness to counteract that bitter dankness, earthy dankness. It's not the most exciting beer to smell, but it, it smells good. And uh, I think this has got a higher uh, wort or wort content than the regular beer, uh, regular Hellas that they do. And again, for like export, so it lasts a bit longer. They say it's like, it increases the ABV, but it's only 5.5%. So it's not that big of an ABV, and I'm not sure just how much of a shelf life a beer like this would have. But even though it was brewed for export, it's still a very popular beer back in Munich. So yeah, it smells good. It, well, it's what you expect from a lager, uh, nice and clear got a nice amount of bubbles there's really no head it's like a nice strawy sort of color uh, it's not the strongest of colors but you know it's not exactly piss weak and uh, yeah it looks good it smells good and on the taste yeah the only complaint that I'd have a tiny bit watery you know the body is a little bit weak but you've got those nice malts there. You've got a slight raisin, berry sort of flavour. Not like really juicy, but just really faint in the background. Like they've been dried for a while. You're getting a little bit of lemony citrus there as well. And those malts and those like bready, biscuity tones. And yeah, there's really not too much you can say about the style in general. But this is a really good example of it. Um, I'm not too sure exactly um, how this differs compared to the regular Hellas that they do which is one of my favorite beers you can buy like a six pack in some supermarkets here in 500 ml bottles for like four euros that's perfect it's perfect for me great price range and uh yeah i think i paid about one euro for this and obviously i get eight cents back with the recycling so it's money well spent really enjoyable beer not, not much to it don't get me wrong, it's not an exciting beer. It's not, you know, a shining example of... The, well, it is. It's a shining example of the style, but it's not the best that the style can offer. It's not the best that Paolan offers. But it's still a damn good beer. Sessionable, drinkable, crisp, quenches your thirst. Perfect for summer. Perfect just to lounge back with. And, um, yeah, if you're looking for lagers that actually have some sort of personality and flavour to them and you stumble across this one, definitely check it out. Uh, in fact, if you're starting to stray away from the macro calling, Carlsbergs, that sort of thing, if you like that sort of stuff, fair play. I hate people who judge people on what they drink. It's a beer at the end of the day. Some people like to drink other stuff. Oh, your friends drinks Chewbog? Oh God, he must be an arsehole then. I hate that sort of mentality where people judge people on what they drink. Drink what you want. It doesn't matter who brewed it. If you like it, if you like the flavour, if you like the buzz it gives you, as long as you're not acting like a dick around me, you can drink whatever the hell you want. But if you want something that's a little bit different than Carlsberg, but not too overwhelming on the palate, then definitely give this beer a try. Definitely give anything you can source from the likes of Paolana, 
Warsteiner, I know that's appearing in a lot of supermarkets back in the UK. Uh, Bitburger, uh, Felton's, even though it's a really cheap beer here in Germany, but you can pay like £4 for it back in England. Still high quality beer. And yeah, this is a high quality beer. So um, yeah, I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. It's not my favourite Paulana beer, it's not my favourite lager that I've tried or Hellas that I've tried, but it's still a damn good one. And I just want to stop this video so I can actually enjoy the beer. So uh, yeah, apologies for the length of this video. I'm the clueless drinker, I talk shit. That's what I do. Um, my inexperience is evident in the duration of this video. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate everyone who likes comments. I've got a small group of regular people who comment. I really appreciate it. I'm going to do like a big shout out video sometime. Um, and these are people who actually know what they're talking about. They've actually been doing this for a lot longer than I have. They're uh, a bit older than I am, even though there are some really fantastic YouTubers who are still a bit younger than me. And, you know, I'm just a tiny fish, tiny inexperienced fish in a massive pond of some really fantastic people. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I've really ever, ever got a negative comment or people tell me, you should stop doing beer reviews because you're absolutely awful. And I hope that what I can say has actually helped you potentially look into different avenues if you're a person who is, you know, getting into this sort of stuff. That's why I started the channel. I don't know why I've, you know, gone for the Jerry's Final Thought and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I just wanted to say it. And, uh, yeah, check out my other Lager, Amber Lagers, Hellas reviews down below by clicking the playlist. Subscribe for more beer reviews. Uh, of course, if you want to find out more about this beer and hear some other opinions on it, those links will be down below as well. Check out my Instagram if you're on Instagram. Uh, specifically, I've got a Clueless Stringer Instagram now. And uh, yeah, that's coming along. That's getting me new views, hopefully. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. Tell me what your thoughts and opinions are on this beer. And until the next time, I shall see you all later. Cheers, guys.